Thank you so much, Ambassador Devan, uh, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished friends. Uh, I come from the Dominican Republic, which uh, is a country in the Caribbean. And even though we're very far away from Israel, we have had a long-standing relationship. Perhaps uh, many of you know that back in the 30s, when the Jews were being persecuted in Europe, the Dominican Republic opened its arms to a Jewish community that's still there in the Dominican Republic almost uh, 70 years after. So it is with this sense of solidarity, it is with this sense of solidarity and friendship that I am here today uh, in accepting an invitation directly from President uh, Perez uh, to be here. And of course, the issue that we're going to be uh, addressing, the issue of uh, food security, uh, water, energy, uh, climate change, I think is one of the main global challenges that we are facing worldwide. And when we think about what uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Taim was saying, we already have a uh, world population of over nearly, nearly 7 billion people. And in the years to come, this will rise to 9 billion people. Uh, can we guarantee food security? Can we guarantee access uh, to fresh water? Uh, what will be the impact of climate change in achieving these goals? So these are very serious questions, uh, and they, of course, require reflection, insights, and research. And I must say, to begin with, that uh, there has been two schools of thought uh, regarding these issues in food, uh, water, uh, and the impact of, of climate change. One is an optimistic view, and the other is a very pessimistic view. The pessimistic view goes even to the 18th century with Malthus, when he indicated that population will grow exponentially in a ge geometric pattern while food production will grow in arithmetic pattern. So the difference is the imbalance between a geometric growth and an arithmetic growth has been there theoretically for quite some centuries. And it's still there. The pessimistic thing that there is an imbalance between population growth and the capacity to produce food, to generate food security, or the capacity to generate the water that is in need uh, to produce uh, the food. The optimists think that, well, water is a renewable source. It goes through the hydrologic cycle, the hydrologic cycle. Uh, water comes through the rainfall. It evaporates. It goes back into the atmosphere within this cycle. So it's different from oil. That is a non-renewable source. Water is a renewable source. So perhaps there should not be so much fear that, will we, that the world will run out of water. This is not the case. But uh, I think putting in perspective, what we have is, are we able to feed the planet? Are we in capacity to really satisfy the growing population's need for food? I think this is the basic question. And I would say uh, in a very optimistic way that yes, uh, I think we are capable of feeding the planet in the years to come. What we have is a combination of challenges that uh, we must address. The first challenge has to do uh, exactly with the use of technologies. I think that it has been proven over the years that with the appropriate use of technologies, you can increase yield productivity. But also, there is a lot of land that has not been exploited that can also be used in the future, more arable land that can be added to the production of different food. So we can do it both ways, increasing yield production through technologies, but also expanding the use of land that at this moment uh, has not been uh, properly exploited. This has a major challenge, of course. Through economic growth, there has been a process of urbanization. And through urbanization and immigration process, people from the rural sector going into cities. And when you move into cities, there's an increase of uh, water need because now you build skyscrapers and now you need to uh, wash dishes and, and bathing. And there are some other needs that you didn't have when there was the prevalence of the rural sector. So urbanization represents a challenge to water supply that was only used uh, in the agricultural sector years before. 
So where is the water going to come from uh, is the question. We know in terms of global water resources that 90% uh, of the water in the planet is salt water, is in the ocean that we cannot use. Only 3% uh, in the planet is fresh water. And of that 3%, we all know that uh, two-thirds of it comes from the glaciers and from the frozen ice pots. So it seems, when you put it in this perspective, that we are in certain kind of, of trouble. Only 3% of fresh water and two-thirds of it coming from the glaciers, which are now melting. But the, the thing is that we now have the technology to produce desalinization. What we need to do is create it on a massive scale. So in the years to come, salt water can be transformed into potable water. And I think the science is there uh, to make this transition from salt to fresh water. Uh, what is needed is huge investment, uh, new developments, new technological developments to make it available to huge populations. So I think the use of water for irrigation, for agriculture, could be solved with the use of technologies. Uh, we do believe that uh, the world then has the opportunity to be, to be fed uh, with this uh, capacity of generating the water needed uh, to, uh, to fertilize the land. Of course, since the 60s, there has been a, an, an agricultural revolution that also has enabled uh, to increase capacity for food production. Uh, the use of fertilizers, for example, the use of pesticides, of vaccines to prevent diseases in agricultural products, all this has made a major transformation uh, in agriculture. Uh, but even going beyond that, beyond uh, the fertilizers and pesticides, uh, we also have new technologies to deal with uh, salinization of soil, soil erosion, uh, in order to uh, even enable uh, increasing capacity, the need to reforestation uh, in countries that have been affected by a deforestation process. So we can see that uh, the challenges are big. Uh, we know that there are some uh, radical changes that have been taking place in terms of population growth patterns, in terms of migration, in terms of urbanization, uh, water usage. But at the same time, we see that we, are being, uh, we have been introducing new technologies, uh, new improvements in order to uh, meet the needs of, of world population. In the Dominican Republic, as we all know, we share the islands with Haiti. The Dominican Republic is the eastern two-thirds island of Hispaniola, and Haiti is one-third. There is a major difference between Haiti and the Dominican Republic in terms of natural resources. We have seen some uh, uh, pictures uh, from above states, stating the difference between both nations. The Dominican Republic is, is green, and on the other side, in Haiti, you can see the deforestation. And of course, that marks a great difference in terms of access to water. In the Dominican Republic, there is an abundance of water, an abundance of water supply, as in general terms there is in all Latin America. We have to remember that the Amazon River provides 16% of water supply worldwide. In Latin America in general, and the Caribbean, there is an abundance of water supply, different to what happened, for example, in North Africa, or the Middle East, or, or, or North China, or, or parts of India, as, as I've known. This is not a problem in Latin America. We're one of the richest places in the world in terms of water resources. Now, the case of Haiti is different because over two centuries, Haiti has gone through a process of deforestation. So it has weakened its soil capacity, and when there is a rainfall, uh, the rainfall creates uh, uh, mudslides uh, because of the erosion that it has experienced over many years. And because of, of the weakening of, of the soil, because of the erosion of the soil, the salinization of the soil due to deforestation, there is a problem of water supply in Haiti that of course creates a challenge for food production in the future. This of course can also be dealt with uh, with technologies. 
with a, a lot of investment that needs to be made in terms of infrastructure. But for Haiti, for the Middle East, for North Africa, for all the places in the world that are being affected with problems of water supply, the need has to be, the, the solution to this problem will come with a partnership, public-private partnership, that will make investments in infrastructure, that will have a plan for research, development, and innovation, and the application of these new scientific knowledge into the production of food and guaranteeing the accessibility of water supply. So in terms of natural resources, in terms of what the nature can provide to an increasing population, I am in the optimistic side. I think there can be a human-made solution to the problems. We have other difficulties in terms of guaranteeing food security, which has to do with prices, price hikes in the world markets. But this is another issue that perhaps I can discuss with you during the Q&A section. Thank you very much.